My goal is to raise up the boat. As you can see, it has sunken into the ground. Ground is pretty soft. This is where the plate is that's holding it up. I want to raise that maybe six inches, which would normally take me half a day, maybe all day with a jack system that I've used before. I'm going to try something different. Here's the engine hoist. I'm hooked up to two points. And the reason I'm raising this is that I don't have enough space from here to here, which is about six feet, to angle the engine the way that I want it to be. So I'm going to have to raise this up. You'll notice that I made a cutout as well. The reason for that is because I'm going to sink the engine in about six inches. So it'll be further, the engine stand at least, will be about six inches below the bottom of the hull. Just to lower the center of gravity, hopefully use the engine as part of the ballast, and also to put the propeller as low in the water as possible. Here is fit number one. So my brother and I were working on a race car. It was a BMW E36. And we took these pieces off. I forget where they go, but they might be like engine mounts or something like that. And he said, you should save these because you never know what you'll be able to use them for. Looks like they're almost the perfect size to use in the engine mounts for the MD2B. My other option are some engine mounts from the VW Type 4. They look like they'll fit in there nicely. The other mounts are rubber also, so I'll probably go with the rubber. I want the propeller to be approximately here. I already measured everything with the cutlass bearing on there. So I'm going to have to shorten this shaft 9.5 inches. That means I'll have to cut a new keyway and a new divot for the keeper screw to go in. Here are the results with the grinder compared to the machined out slot. There's a little score mark right there that marks where it would sit inside of that groove. And then here is where it sits inside of that groove as well. It's pretty much the same. So with a lot of dipping the drill bit in water, I was able to create that little divot. Based on my calculations, if I want this engine to sit at a 10 degree angle while it's in the water, then I want to see a drop from this point to this point of approximately 12 inches. Here's the mark, make it level, measure down to it, I've got 12 inches. Here's the plan, I'm going to make another one of these hand cranks for the MD2B Volvo diesel engine. This is my new hand crank part, I'm going to chop up this which is for lug nuts on a wheel. Same thing with this, I'll connect those two together. That will be welded on to here, which is a freewheel. This will go on to here. And then it will be wrapped with this. And all of that will go inside after I cut it about here. And I'll fill that in. I think this fills it in. Uh, and then same thing here. I'll cut this with grooves so that it fits over top of the freewheel. The idea is I can crank it this way and the engine will be cranked over. But let's say the engine suddenly starts and I haven't let go of this crank yet. It will freewheel in that direction. So that way I'll have time to pull this out and the engine won't break my arm on this piece. So 
there's the jack setup. And then here's the final setup. I'm not actually using this one right now, but I did have a sort of double pull before. So there's no gap here, but you can see there's quite a big gap here. I'm expecting that as I weld along, the metal will heat up and become more pliable, and the tension that's on here will bring this metal up the rest of the way. So you can see that worked. It's not closed completely, but a lot more than it used to be. This weld I was able to just keep going up until about here, and then I stopped to let the weld cool a little bit, which pulls the metal together some more, and now I'll do the rest of the way. So here it is so far. Plenty of access to anything that I need to get to down there. A little bit of prying and wedging, and I've got this piece lined up real nice right there it's perfect i'll start welding on that and then i'll pry it up a little bit as i go so that i can make these edges meet this is such a pleasure to work today it's an easy welding position i'm outside with the wind blowing so the smoke goes away and the welds are super easy to access tack weld here to start. In the end I'm resorting to the winch hoping that it will stay on that tab over there. Took about an hour to get to this point. Got a nice flush fit right there. I'll weld that and just keep pulling a little bit more as I go and lever it and get it done. Got lucky this tree was there. So this outside line is the line I traced with the stick. And this inside line is the one I'm going to cut. It gets more and more away from that line as it goes up. This is 85 millimeters at the top. And the reason for that is I want the stern to curve in so that when the waves hit it, it's just that much stronger because it's got a little bit of an arc to resist with. So this sheet curved real nicely. So I was thinking to myself, maybe I'm getting better at this. But then I just totally mangled this one. I've got a crease here. I pulled on that. Somehow it creased over here instead of below it. I'm not sure why it would do that. You'd think it would curve. It would crease like this. So I still can't predict what the metal's going to do. My problem is I've got a compound curve. It's starting low here. It's coming up here. And I'm also trying to bend it this way. So we'll see how this ends up. So here's what it looks like on the outside. It's a lot better than it used to be. Not anywhere near perfect but I'll work on that with smaller hammers later on. Winch system, sledgehammer, attachment to that point. And then I climbed up there and re-wedged the wood with an inch and a half extra push and I've got this. I need this piece to come in and this part of the piece to go down. I need the curve to be about like this because that curve over there goes deeper this way if I want to make it symmetrical. Here's how the panel turned out so far. Not bad. Here's the 
engine mount that the factory built. And then here's the mount that I put together. Everything's real secure. For those of you who love engines but you don't know about how the Volvos are built, I did not know this. This is not an oil pan. It's just one big piece of metal all connected and I guess you get to the rods and the crank through there. Pretty cool. Copper pipe. Six holes. All right, that worked. Here are the finished products. Took me about an hour to do the whole thing, about half an hour to do the six eyelets. These cables I got for free. They're from some old jumper cables. I found these in the forest. I know it's hard to believe that I find so much stuff in the forest, but just keep in mind, people dump their trash there all the time. All the surfaces where I'm going to put these grounds are unpainted. And here's where all those ground cables go. Here's one. This is the most important one for the starter. And then another one in front, just because I can. Even though there's no electricity going to this engine besides to the starter, it does develop electrolysis because of the water passing over dissimilar metals. Discharging any electrical charge through all these grounds helps prevent that.